um, first of all, um, confidence, and it's also about um, reducing some of the um, opportunities um, and the incentives for speculation. Um, I've always believed that, for example, all marketing, uh, the, the, the large arbitrage opportunities between uh, the domestic price for fuel and the, pr and the, f and the price in neighboring countries uh, provided an incentive for importers to basically purchase much more uh, than, than, we, than we need domestically and smuggle it, um, either by um, berthing the ship um, in cotton and offloading or, or bringing it in and then, and then taking it out. Um, and I think um, some of the uh, changes in that market are going to lead to a dampening um, of demand from that side. Um, there's also the fact that all prices have remained firm. If you look at 2010, we lost 10 billion in reserves. In 2011, they were constant. Okay, so we've moved. Well, it looks like we haven't increased. We've actually moved positive 10 billion. Okay, from a net position of minus 10 to to zero. Um, so we gradually um, going into into a process where we're having um, improved net savings um, um, in reserves. And um, since the beginning of the year, we've built up to 34 billion from 32, and it's continuing um, on a regular basis. Uh, we're getting, we're trapping more of the oil revenues. We we basically spending less, and therefore some of the speculative demand where people bet against the currency will begin to disappear. People don't feel the need and the urgency uh, to purchase dollars now because they think there's going to be a depreciation. So um, those, um, and then of course we have also at the central bank. Um, as you as you're aware, starting last quarter of, of the year, um, tightened controls um, uh, and basically tried to make sure that uh, we check sharp practices uh, within the banking system. Um, th those uh, should help us, and and our, our stance has always been clear: we're not um, a bank that is going for a fixed exchange rate, but we but we committed to stability. And we're very transparent about it. When we wanted 150 plus or minus 3 percent, we had it. When we thought, um, given where the um, move rates were and given where the demand was, we should move down, we moved. Uh, we're at 155 plus or minus 3 percent. Uh, reserves are building up. Uh, we're under no pressure at all uh, to devalue. Um, if the reserves continue building up, we'll actually be in an opposite situation where we are resisting the pressure to revalue because we think that we need to build buffers. At this moment, uh, building reserves is more important than a stronger currency. People just want stability. So from the perspective of a foreign investor, I think um, um, having a stable exchange rate with a range in which you can measure um, exchange rate risk, plus um, very high rates of interest, um, that's all he needs. How prepared are Nigerian banks for the impending global economic slowdown? What are your thoughts on how prepared we are compared to 2009. I think the uh, the banks are much better prepared today than they were in 2009. In 2009, they had um, huge exposures to a capital market that was already in a bubble, um, and those exposures have gone uh, because they've taken those losses, uh, and we've put in tight controls on margin lending. Um, exposure to the stock market is not much, and in any case, stock market is um, at the bottom, so there's no risk of a, of a busted bubble. Uh, in 2009, they had huge unhedged exposures to all marketers, um, and the lessons that they've learned uh, from that means that um, at the moment, most of the all marketing exposures um, are covered um, by product or by receivables. Um, so in terms of the banks, um, the, the principal risk um, that we see um, can only come uh, through two channels. Um, and uh, if, if, the, if there's a massive um, collapse in oil price, which is really a nightmare scenario, um, and that then affects um, government revenues, um, then that is likely to affect those banks that are dependent on public sector liability. So th it is a balance sheet effect. Um, we have um, dimensioned that. We know the banks that have public sector exposures. Uh, we've run stress tests. Uh, we have um, um, action plans to deal with that in the event of that happening. Um, the foreign exchange positions that they're holding um, are not significantly uh, risky. So um, even in the event of a depreciation of the currency, we're not going to see the kind of impact that we had in 2009 when the Naira crashed uh, by 25 percent. So um, by and large, um, I, I do think I think the banks are better prepared. Um, and by and large, I think the economy itself um, is um, um, is more vulnerable only because of the very low buffers that we have 
in terms of reserves. We're at um, over 50 billion when the last time have a nice 30 billion. Um, but, but I do think with the accretion we're having and with the news coming out of Europe um, and with what you know of the oil market, um, I do not um, see a major problem, but we are prepared. Let's come back to the MPC decision today and talk to us about the risks for negative interest rates in Nigeria, especially now that we're expecting inflation to take up in the first and second quarter. Well, the estimates of our staff um, suggest that inflation will range between 11 and 14.5% in the first two quarters, and after that it will come down. Um, and we have looked at every single instance of fuel price increase, and what happens is that inflation goes up and then it goes down um, with, within, a few, uh, within a few months, okay, maybe two, three months. Um, so there is a possibility that at some point uh, the MPR itself will be negative. Uh, but remember that today um, the yields anyway on long-term instruments are already in the 14-15% range. Um, so um, it will, the likelihood that those will turn negative um, is slim, and, but if they do, for a brief period, we expect um, after the end of the second quarter inflation starts trending down um, and we should be getting back to roughly where we are about 10 percent or just below by the end of 2013 so um, there there is really no necessity uh, for correcting NPR in response to what is a short-term explainable structural shock um, that will um, abate um, will we uh, increase um, the rates during the year, it depends on other factors. It depends on whether the government decides to spend more, whether the National Assembly increases the benchmark for the budget. Um, so if you've got monetary variables that seem to compound the inflation problem, we will respond. We, do, we, will, ne we will not have an accommodation for fiscal um, uh, dominance. However, um, other than that, I think this is something that we can bring down uh, without necessarily uh, uh, shocking the market uh, more.